music. Amen. Appreciate everyone being here. A few years ago, I used this illustration, but I want to use it again and uh, do it a little bit differently. And then I want to look at the Word of God as we get ready for 2018. For all that's going to be here on Tuesday evening, you get an opportunity to start coming on Tuesday evening. If you don't, start the new year off right, right? Bible study, we always have a great time. But we're going to take this Tuesday evening to reflect a little bit of what God's done for us in 2017. So come with your testimonies on Tuesday. Has anyone ever flown before the airport? Anyone ever go to the airport and fly? Did you enjoy that? Fly? Caleb, you recently flew, didn't you? Just this, this week, right? And uh, so, uh, can you verify that they still stay in the airport? You'll hear occasionally, every so many moments, if someone tries to give you something that you didn't bring, that you're not to take it? Did they have that? Yeah. And uh, did they try to keep an eye on your packages so that someone don't slip anything in your packages? Anyone ever fly before? You'll hear that over and over again. If you're in the airport for any of the time, uh, it'll, it'll just kind of be nothing to you because you've heard it once, you've heard it twice, you've heard it 10, you've heard it 15 times. I wonder if we would look back over 2017 and we would look at the packages that we get to travel with, the suitcases. Ours aren't empty yet, or I was going to bring a suitcase. It was easier to scrap some boxes, right? We got home late last night with crazy weather. We got stuck behind an accident. All that crazy stuff that slows you down. You know, life, does it ever get that way for you? You know, those things. I want to ask you something. If you look back over 2017, there were some great things that happened in that year. Some of you probably looked, and maybe there were some additions to your family. There were some births. Uh, you know, uh, uh, that's exciting. Maybe there were some additions to your family that there was some marriages that happened, so your family grew. Maybe some of your family didn't grow by, uh, by, by two feet. Maybe they grew by some uh, a furry four-legged feet. Maybe you got a, a new animal in your home. Uh, you know, whatever it may be. You know, there were some exciting things that happened in your 2017. Uh, maybe you got a new vehicle. Maybe you got a new home. Maybe you remodeled. Uh, maybe you, uh, uh, you know, whatever it may be. Maybe you got a raise. Maybe you got a promotion. The, all those exciting things that happen in life. I love those things, don't you? You don't? Why are you people crazy here? Those are good things in life, right? All those good things that happen in life. But sometimes there's bad things that happen in life, too. You know, we look back over this year, and for us as a family, my wife's grandfather got sick very suddenly and passed away. Last Christmas, we would have never expected that. Last year, we would have never expected that. So it was very different this year. It was an empty seat at the table. You remember things, and you continue to look good memories. But sometimes, in the middle of life, life can throw some things on you that really you didn't mean to pick up and you didn't mean to carry. Let's look at some things for the next couple seconds. Sometimes we can pick up just being wasteful. It was interesting. If you don't eat leftovers at your house, don't lose out. Okay. Uh, but at our house, we eat leftovers. Amen. You know, we, we don't care. Amen. You know, we 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 eat all until it's gone. Some people don't. And you know, uh, but but we were reminiscing with my mother-in-law, and she was telling me that when they first got married, they were so uh, so uh, 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 tired of a budget. She said, "I would take the coffee from the day before, and I would put it in the refrigerator and get up and warm it on the stove the next day because we didn't have much." I do that, <laughs> right? But if we're not careful, we become wasteful. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about time. 
I'm talking about our relationship with God. We can become very wasteful with things. If in 2017 you found that you've picked up some baggage that it used to be that you were wasteful, it's time before we get to 2018 to lay down today. How about some bad habits? Maybe you came into this year and maybe uh, things were well, but maybe with a different set of crowds, maybe with a little extra time on your hands, whatever it may be, you picked up some bad habits. How you treat your body, how you treat others, how you treat your family, how you spend your time, how you spend your money. All those things, bad habits. It's time to lay down. How about unforgiveness? You found that someone hurt you in 2017. Maybe you found that God did some things or allowed some things to happen in your life and uh, you didn't like it, so you're a little upset with Him over the agenda of how things went. Unforgiveness holds you. <coughs> Forgiveness doesn't mean that we just allow someone to go on without ever, ever saying anything to them. Do you understand what God has done for you? If you look at your life and all that God has done for you and the mound that He has forgiven you, what is it for you to give someone? It's time to lay down. How about intimidation? Can any of you pick up any intimidation in this past year where you say, I can't, I can't approach that, I can't do that, I, I, I'm not able? Sometimes because of our history of failure, we begin to say, well, I just can't do it. The Word of God says that though I fall, I shall rise. <coughs> it's time that we lay intimidation aside. Let's see if we pick anything else up. How many of you in 2017 <coughs> experienced some disappointment? Maybe the outcome wasn't the way that you wanted. Maybe it just didn't plan out the way that you had it devised in your mind. And so disappointed, so you hang on to it. Today is an opportunity to set us back. I don't want to. How about some anger? I know the Word of God says be angry and sin not. Sometimes we can become angry over things that really aren't important. So I want to say it's time to get rid of that. That's what I want to talk a little bit about this morning. I want to look at redeeming the time. In Ephesians chapter number 5, and I know that we've looked at this verse before in the past, but I want to look at a few verses. But Ephesians chapter number 5, starting in verse number 15, the Word of God says, See then that you walk circumspectly, or that carefully taking heed. Some of you may remember I shared with you what that circumspectly means, and I don't need to be crude, but the best way I can describe circumspectly, and I read this illustration, is I grew up in West Virginia, and I grew up on a farm, and uh, we had beef cows, and uh, uh, you know we would go, we would put them out into pasture to feed, and uh, uh, then Sister Rachel, there was times that we would go out in the pasture, we want to fly kite, or we would go out there to walk around, and Sister Tina, we had to walk circumspectly. Because there wasn't just a certain area where those cows decided to deposit their waste. They would do it anywhere. And so if you if you want to keep yourself nice and tidy and smelling good, you learn to watch where you were stepping. 
And so we need to, in this next year, 2018, we need to be careful of the way that we walk, that we walk the way that pleases God, that we walk the way that is God's plan for our life, that we walk circumspectly. The Bible says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as a fool. A fool is someone who, who, who never avails himself to God. But he does everything for himself. 2018 shouldn't be a year that I live to me or you live to you. But it should be a year that, that we live in wisdom to giving every moment of every day to God. The Bible goes on now to say, but what? Taking advantage of every opportunity that the Lord gives that presents itself. This is a year that God is going to give presentation that we can do things for Him. And so the Word of God says that we're to walk circumspectly, not as fools, but wise. God, let me have uh, every opportunity. The Bible says because the days are evil. If we don't live our life according to the cross, then we find that evil will prevail. Wherefore, be ye not unwise when it comes to time, but understanding what is the will of the Lord. Has anyone ever heard of John Maxwell before? John Maxwell is, is a great author. Uh, he's, he, he is, uh, in, in the religious spectrum, very well sought after and very well thought of. And, and John Maxwell offers some wisdom, and it's, it's really good. He says that uh, uh, really the, the key, uh, well, let me just read it. Uh, only a hand, there's only a handful of important decisions during our lifetime. The key, key to success is managing those decisions in our daily schedule. If you want to do something with your life, then you must focus on today. So there's only a handful of great big decisions that we'll ever make in our life. Think about those decisions, our career path, the path of our mate, uh, 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 the decisions of where we'll live, the decisions of, of what we'll do with our time, our occupation. So there's, there's only a handful of really big decisions, but then you're given life, and then life is every day we have to make decisions that guide us and keep us in our big decisions, right? Amen. So if you want to keep your house, then it would be a wise choice for you to work a job. It would be a wise choice for you to pay the mortgage. It would be a wise choice for you to pay the insurance. It would be a wise choice for you to, to, to do maintenance to your home. And, and those are the things that you do on a daily basis so that you can keep that one big call. If you want to have a good marriage, it isn't just about that one big wedding day. Sister Tina, how many years is it for you? 32 years, 32 years ago, but, uh, but, but Sister Dot, it's about every day now making a decision about that. That wedding date, Brother Walt, uh, we, 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 we make those daily decisions on that. And so, it's interesting what the Word of God has to say in Psalms 139. Let me read it to you. Psalms 139, verse number 16. David wrote, he said, Your eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in your book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Now someone has suggested that we could read this, and I, I'm not taking away from the Word of God. Let me just bring some perspective to it. But you saw me before I was born, and you scheduled every day of my life before I began to breathe. Every day was recorded in your book. Think about that. Before you were ever born, some of you that was just a decade or two ago, some of you that was several decades ago, that in your mother's womb, God saw you, He formed you, and He fashioned you. And God knew every day that you would have. God even knew about your 2018. And God scheduled all of your days. How amazing is that, that God 
scheduled your days. And so even before you begin to take a breath, God had every day of your life scheduled out for you. I wonder how often you and I take the opportunity to find the schedule that God has for us for the day. Listen, your agenda today and my agenda for today needs to be the Lord's. When we get up in 2018, I want to challenge us. Sister Tina said this before a couple of years ago. She said it's like you're given a clean slate. How many of you like that clean slate? I mean, it is clean. It is white. There is no debris from it being written on before. It is completely yours. It is a clean slate. So let me make some suggestions from the Word of God because the Bible says that He has scheduled our every day. Then how should we live our every day? When you get up every day, you should say, it's your agenda today, Lord. What is your agenda for me? The Bible says that our body should be offered to Him as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. This is the day that the Lord hath made. So God, your will be done in this day that I have. Amen. Let it be done on earth even so as it is in heaven. You're going to start January 1st tomorrow. And it's your opportunity to say, God, this is your day. Even before I was born, you scheduled my day. So God, I want to know what your agenda is for this day. This is the day that you've made. So you're welcome. We need to schedule. We need to plan very carefully. Now, in our home, my wife, when she purchases her calendar for the year, we utilize that a lot. Everything goes in there. Some of you may be at work. I love my work schedule. Maybe some of you on your email, you have Outlook, and your calendar is there. It's slotted what your meetings are. I go to work, I click, I see what the agenda is. So I know what time I need to be at meetings. I don't know what needs, what's going on. It's all scheduled <coughs> so very, very well. I need to tell you that the Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter number 90, verse number 12, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. There should be things that we plan out in our days. It shouldn't just be lived haphazardly. But the Word of God tells us that we need to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. So as you are scheduling out your day, I want to really encourage you, as I'm encouraging myself, to make sure that we schedule the things that are appropriate to the Word of God or the plan of God, that we schedule those things. No oh, schedule to know and read the Word of God. Take an opportunity right now to read the Word of God through in this next year. Slate yourself some time. Now I know that there's going to be lots of things that are going to happen. There are going to be budgets that happen this next year. I mean, at least are good for the month of January, right? Amen. There's going to be good intentions. There are going to be diets. There's going to be exercises. And there are going to be all kinds of things that are going to be lying down. But I need to tell you that we need to plan our days very carefully because God told us to number our days and apply our hearts to wisdom. So we need to be doing that with each and every day. And then we need to, as we plan our days, we need to accept interruptions wisely. Do you know that God loves to interrupt? He loves to interrupt. He loves for things to happen to show us that He's in control. How many of you have ever faced disappointments in life? Do you typically schedule them on your calendar? 
I'm glad we don't schedule we had to have a disappointment at 2 o'clock on Monday afternoon. They kind of come unexpected, Kate. But I need to tell you that take disappointments as divine appointments. You see, Jesus, he had a lot of things going on, but he lied on the schedule. One day he was teaching, and guess what? Everybody got hungry, and there wasn't enough food. And so all these disappointments of the disciples and everyone else, he used it as an appointment to show that he was God. He multiplied the food. How many of you know that there was a woman with an issue of blood that, that, that came and, and, and interrupted Jesus as he was on his way to visit a little girl? How many of you know that there was a blind Barnabas that when Jesus was passing by began to cry out in every direction because he wanted the mercies of God in his life? Can I tell you that sometimes disappointments become divine appointments that God wants to work and move in our life? So learn to clear off your agenda and your schedule and say, God, whatever you have for me, amen, I want your plan to be done. Amen. God has a way of decluttering things. And so in this next year, know that your disappointment is a divine appointment of God. <clears throat> but look for open doors. The Bible says that Paul went into the marketplace and he didn't know who he was going to meet. But there was many there in the marketplace who showed up who he began to teach. You know, you and I each have our marketplace. And I'm not talking about Boyers. And I'm not talking about Walmart. I'm not talking about Hoover's. I'm not talking about Wise. Those are marketplaces in our mind where we go for grocery shopping. And they may be part of our marketplace. But the marketplace that you and I have is our jobs and the place that our schedules take us. We go to the marketplace. And when we go to the marketplace, we should be looking for open doors. God sends someone by that we can share the gospel with. God sent someone by that we can pray with. God sent someone by our marketplace. Amen. That it is a divine appointment uh, ordered by heaven. Amen. So look for open doors. See, God loves to open doors and God loves to close doors. <coughs> but when he opens one door, but when he closes one door, he typically opens another door. Don't be afraid to walk through the door. You know the word January comes from Januwa, which means this. It means a doorway or a window. If I were this morning to open this door and I were to stand in it, I would be in the January. I would be between the sanctuary and the ceremony. Right now, you and I are at the door. You and I are in the doorway. It closes out 2017, and it's an opening that leads to 2018. And as God has opened the door, it's time to reflect on what God has done, but then it's time to move through the door and go into what He has prepared for you and I. And I said, well, so girl, maybe this year won't be a year of great big things for me. Why don't you just learn to walk circumspectly and perform the small task that God gives you gladly? What, whatsoever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it in the Lord, giving thanks to Him. <coughs> Maybe it won't be a job change that you so much want. But be thankful with the task he's given you. Maybe it won't be a new house, or maybe it won't be a new car. But be thankful for the things that he has you. Be diligent. Be thankful. And glad in the small things. You know, sometimes, as much as we try, some things just seem to be left undone. We just can't do them, right? Yeah. 
If there are some things that Brother Wally, that you and I, Brother Dennis, you and I have done that seem to be undone, how we, we just have to trust the undone things to the hand of God. Then we go. I've done my best. There's no more that I can do, Sister Tina. So I trust the undone things to the hand of God. Because He does them well. The Word of God says that the, year of our, the years of our lives are three score and ten. And if by reading of strength there's four score, that means seven or eighty. And then our life is cut off and we fly away. Now teach us to number our days. Folks, sometimes you can't change people. Folks, sometimes you just gotta let it go. Every one of us has a clean slate. If you drag extra baggage into this year, that's not God's fault. That's our fault. Because we didn't leave it outside the door. Did you ever go somewhere where you had to take your shoes off at the door? It's time to take the shoes off and leave it there. And come inside and enjoy it. Father, lead me day by day, ever in my own sweet way. Teach me things that are pure and true. Show me what I must do. I just want us to be challenged this morning to enter into 2018 intentionally. Sister Rachel, if I'm not intentional about some things, they won't get done. If you're not intentional about the way that you live your days, it won't happen. But teach me, Lord, to know about my days. Teach me. God already knew the schedule of your life for 2018 before you were born. Say, so God, today is yours. You will be God. And then plan accordingly. When there are disappointments and interruptions, Take the disappointments as divine appointments for God to work in you. Sister Holly, if you can come to the piano this morning, would everyone all around the sanctuary would you stand? And I'm a little later, we're going for food. You can rest up this evening. But I believe that it's very serious this morning that we enter into 2018. How many of you want to do God's will in 2018? You know how it's going to happen? By being intentional. By working, walking circumspectly. Saying, God, I want to be wise, redeeming your time. I don't want to be foolish. But I want to keep the cross and your will at the center of all things. I don't want to carry extra baggage Somehow I picked up, but at the door, I traveled. And now I walk through the door of a new opportunity. God has presented to each of us an open door. It's time to walk through. Would you come and be intentional in prayer as we get ready to walk into 2018? Would you gather in this morning, find a place of prayer, say, God, not my agenda in this next year, but yours. God, I don't want to carry anything in that you didn't give me. But I want to walk in freely. And I want to embrace your perfect will in 2018.